just a few more, but on behalf of uh, my spirit guides and myself, I want to welcome you to Sunday morning spiritual celebration. And I also want to take the opportunity to say happy holidays, 2023. <laughs> I think I told you that mine started some time ago. It's going to last until February. <laughs> But I'm happy to be alive and well, and I'm happy to be able to embrace and welcome and allow my spirit to celebrate this day with me and with you this morning. I appreciate my spirit guides. They've been with me all week, all the time with me, most of the time, even when I don't pay attention to them, they're paying attention to me, thank goodness. But I'm going to, I'll again, just be real brief and kind of short here because I think, I think I've already given you marching papers and I, and I know, I, I know that even though hope, the definition or defining hope may be a little bit of a challenge for us, sometimes when we really stop and think about it, we, we all probably have experienced it. We all probably have it in our, in our, even in our natural physical man self, in our minds and in our physical bodies and ourselves, but our spirit, our spirit knows a hope that's deeper than the hope that our minds tell us and that our physical beingness tell us and, 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 and demonstrate for us. But, but, you know, hope is a feeling. It really is a feeling. And I'm going to tell you just a few things that I have come to understand through my own personal experience with hope and with the help of my spirit guides and father my creator, my source, I've come to understand it a little bit deeper than my mental and my emotions. One of the things that I'm going to share just real quick and is something that I'm I'm I consider myself, I dub myself a master manifester. And if you if you know anything about manifesting is that we bring, we create and we manifest and we bring things into our own lives, into our own experiences. And I dub myself to be a master, not quite as not quite the master that Jesus the Christ was, or Neville, my guru, is or was when he was walking the earth. But you know, I don't do a bad job at manifesting intentionally. Because we manifest anyway, whether we whether we do it on purpose or not. But a master manifester intend and purposefully aware and consciously manifest. And I do my very best to be that master. Again, I'm still perfecting that 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 skill, that ability, that power, because staying present and staying aware and, and awakened is a challenge for us earth folk, earth earthbound people. And that is where hope comes in. It's because if we could maintain that spiritual characteristic, that spiritual aspect, that spiritual awareness, that spiritual consciousness that we are, we wouldn't need hope at all. Because we would know that what we speak and what we say and what we feel and what we what we talk about, we bring about. We already, you know, spirit knows that. Spirit knows that without a doubt. Master manifestors like myself, I I know it too. <laughs> but I'm not always consciously aware and and purposefully manifesting some of the things that some of the things that I experience. That's why I get some things that I rather not have. Or oops, I did like the Urkel thing. Oops, did I do that? But you know, still try. I'm a work in progress. And hopefully so are you. But one of the things I want to say about hope is uh, as a manifester. It's not something that I, when I when I tr teach people or or have workshops and talk about manifesting, that's not one of the one of the things or the themes or the characteristics that I bring out. In fact, what I usually tell them about hope is, it uh, it's not your hope that's going to manifest; it's your belief that's going to manifest. So the difference between hope and belief it's a stretch. It's a stretch. But we need hope sometimes when we can't quite get a handle on believing it, right? So it's kind of like a go-between. So I might not teach you to hope on something. I tell you to believe it. Believing, believing manifests. Believe, which if you believe it, you'll see it. You'll see it if you believe it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to see it. So the hoping is something else. And what I do, what I say about hope as just a personal 
me personally as a master again, is I say hope is not necessarily for me. The hope that I have is more for you. It's more for the other person. It's more for um, my my students, my children, my my clients. I hope for them. I hope for them because I can't believe for them. I can hope that eventually they will get enough strength in their belief system that they can believe it to make it happen. So I uphold you. I uphold you or whomever with my hope for you. Right? But that hope didn't come from me per se. And that hope that dwell that wells up in you, even though it might be a spark that I've given you to ignite your, your self, to hold on to that, that word, that that word, that that future, that idea, that concept that I've I've sparked in you. Hold on to it until such time that you can truly believe it. Because once you truly believe it, it's not, not nothing's gonna stop it from manifesting, okay? So I give you my hope, right? I hope that you will believe. I hope that during the next three to four weeks that you will go out and you will use your hope to spark another's hope so that they can enjoy this wonderful, beautiful season and that they can make it another day without taking their lives or doing something desperate or, or drastic. That, that, that's what I hope. I hope that this morning's message will, will empower you, empower your hope to build up so that you can go out and celebrate it. And basically celebrating again, nothing but doing and nothing but sharing in this case. So hope as a definition. One of my favorite, favorite definitions is this one. Hope is the elevating feeling that I experience when I see in the mind's eye. When I can't quite believe it yet, but I can visualize it and I can see it in my mind's eye. That's the future that I'm looking at, that I'm seeing. I, don't, I mean, I see it. I see it in my mind's eye. So I have this feeling that wells up in me and I see it and I get so excited from what I see that that excitement and those feelings will generate and grow in me that hope, which is a seed maybe, or just a spark maybe, that's going to ignite myself to grow my belief. So I go from hope, the vision that I've seen, and the feeling, that emotion that I'm having because I'm yearning for it, I'm wanting it, I'm, I'm, I'm desiring it, right? So eventually that turns that hope into a belief, you know? And once I believe it, nothing can stop it. And I'll go step, I go a step farther. Once I believe it, then that belief is the seed for knowing it. Knowing it will happen. It's going to happen if I don't believe it. Not just because I said it or hoped for it, expected it, anticipated it, but it's going to happen because I believed it. I believed it to be true. And with anything in your life, once you see the proof of it, you don't need to believe it anymore, do you? You don't even need to hope anymore. So what we do as believers and as the hands, feet, and mouths of Father, God, creator, is that we use our hope since we can't believe, I can't believe for this, this person that's about to take their life or that's given up all hope or, or just want to go off on a deep end or, or just, you know, you know, just, you know, just hopeless, wrapped in fear, trapped in fear, I should say, can't move, can't go, can't see, can't even visualize. If you can visualize it, if you can visualize it. Then you, then that's your hope is alive. Who was that? Who was that? Uh, who was that? I think it was one of those uh, one of those guys would always say, "Keep hope alive." <laughs> I used to think that who can't keep hope alive? A person that's about to take their life—that means they're hopeless. 
I've been hopeless at times. I've probably been hopeless, you know, recently, if I be honest about it. Because once I get trapped in fear and trapped in doubting, and I get on that wheel that keeps going around and around and around, it's kind of hard to get off. But then I, I'm thankful because I have people in my life that can call me up and say, I saw you the other day, Gina, and you didn't have that pep in your step. What was going on? And I might think back, I said, you know what? When I was walking, I was kind of kept my mind wrapped around something that's going on in my life that I could look at, I could see, not in my mind's eye, but I could see it in the real world. So I got wrapped up in that and caught up in that. And it pulled me down a little bit. It had me looking at my feet. I don't smile at my feet, by the way. So I have to look up. She called me up. She tells me this. She saw me. And I think about it. I thought, oh, yeah. I was caught up. I was caught up in doubting and fearing and wondering how it's going to happen. And, and that's not my that's not my thing to do is figure out how. Just keep believing. And the how, the how will come to me through my spirit, guys, through God, through Father, through vision, through dreams. However, God uses everything, all kind of ways to get, get to us. I read, I read somewhere in the Bible that he talked talk to the guy through a, a donkey. Yeah. But he talks to us through dreams and each other and, 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 and visions that we have and feelings in our bodies and the, our emotions and things. That's what that's how he, he speaks to us directly. But the hope that I want to showcase today or and to bring to your attention and bring to your arsenal or your bag of of goodies or you know, tricks or whatever, however you, whatever you want to call it. You know, you're going to be using this. You're going to be using your hope. You're going to be using it, celebrating it, and you're going to celebrate it by using it and by sharing it over the next few weeks. So I just want to, I want you to find in yourself a definition. I want to read this. I want to read mine again that, that I love. And I use this one when I teach. I say that hope is the elevating feeling we experience when we see in the mind's eye a path to a better future that we're existing in, that we're living in, that we're residing in, that we're having our being in at that moment, right? Hope also acknowledges the significant obstacles. It doesn't, it doesn't wish them away. It acknowledges them. Whoa, I got this situation going on. I am not going to have enough money. to. I don't see in my bank account enough money that's going to get me through all the things on my Christmas to-do list, my Christmas to-go list, my Christmas to-have list, or my holiday busy list. Uh, you know, I may, have, I may have to call off that luncheon if the way it looks. But my hope, my hope is I see myself on Christmas morning or New Year's or my birthday when it's all said and done having the wonderful, splendid, talking about all the wonderful and great things that happened that I experienced during the holidays. The bank account may not be able to tell me that today, but hope, that hope will spark enough in me that I can start visualizing and seeing myself on my birthday after all is said and done. And I'm bragging about what a wonderful son, what a wonderful Christmas and holiday that I had with my family and my friends. And I went here and I had lunch there and I bought this and oh, and I got that. I can, I can see myself talking about it, right? There's so many people that you know, that you know, I promise you, you know that some of these people that right now they are so wrapped up looking down at their feet trying to figure out, looking back and forth at that bank account, looking back at back and forth at, at their job list that they've been, you know, that they don't have yet. You know, they you know, got all these vacant slots on my, on my calendar. I need to have some clients in these names. They don't see that yet. So they're doubting and they're worrying and they're feeling sad. And then you're riding to work, driving to work, and you're passing by this guy who's slept outside all night, apparently, because he's wet and he's grimy. And here you are in your warm car and you're off to go to work, you off to work you go. If you're like some people we know, that I know personally, <laughs> they will stop. They will take their shoes off and they would go back up and they would give those shoes to that person. <laughs> I know some people, I know some people that will do that. No, 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 call it no names, call it no names. I'm not gonna blab on anybody. But 
that is hope. That is giving that person, that homeless person, the hope that they, you know, three minutes before you passed and came back, didn't have. Now, what they do with those shoes is a whole different story. <laughs> but I guarantee you, if they look at their feet going forward, they're going to be smiling at those shoes that you just gave them. Right? Uh -huh. he, had to, he had the reason to look at his feet because he had no shoes <laughs> before. So anyway, but back to this, back to, back to this. The hope, hope has no room for delusions. So we don't wish it away. We don't pretend it's not there. We don't pretend that I see, I see two more zeros behind this, this two on my bank account. We don't pretend that we see it. We see it in the mind's eye. And that sight that we see, that vision that we see stirs up that feeling in us to the degree that it sparks something in us. Revive our hope. Wake up our hope. Bring our hope back alive. Revive our hope. Keep hope alive. It, it, it's not, you, sometimes you have to work at it. Sometimes we have to work at keeping hope alive for ourselves. Not to mention the homeless people, homeless person, the homeless man, or the people that you, that you that, that, the, 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 the people that are sitting in a hospital emergency room today, or the sitting in the, in the Morch Undertaker's parlor, preparing to dress and bury their loved ones here at Christmas time. Here at Christmas time. Even in the midst of all of that rejection and that hopelessness looking stuff, there's still hope. Because as long as you can visualize, as long as you can visualize it, you can revive it, revive that hope. And when you revive that hope, you know that that's just a seed to your belief system. And your belief system is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And you are going to believe. Yeah. Because you're going to start seeing yourself at, at the end, after everything is said and done. If you can see it all said and done, it's good as done. It is, it's good as done. You just hold on to that hope until it becomes a belief and you hold on to that belief until you see what you believe. They say, seeing is believing. Believing is seeing. We gotta have the hope sometimes, and especially during this time of the year, we need hope. And hope is very powerful. Hope is a powerful, it's a powerful opportunity for you to be used by your source. You know, somebody said, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you have all these things that you want and you design your life and you, you're believing for. God's not gonna come down from heaven and well, you know, do it. No, he's not. But he might use Ja'eri or Katura or Koron or Jean or Mark or Debbie or your boss or your neighbor or your, your parents. He may use their hands to be the mouth to deliver whatever it is that you need or that you're desiring and you're wanting and wishing for, hoping for, believing for, visualizing for, dreaming for, whatever, however you... You, you, I think you get my point. You get my point. So I want to give you just a few ways I'm going to ask you to think of these ways. And there's many, many more ways. These are just a few that I'm going to give you that you can celebrate sharing or celebrate the your hope, celebrate the power of your hope by demonstrating it, by sharing it with whomever you may meet during these four weeks. Don't be so busy. Don't get so wrapped up in the hoopla uh, of Kroger and Publix and Target and and you know all those stores. You know, I'm not gonna give them any pro. I'm gonna give them too much promo because they're gonna get enough of my money. But you get my point. Don't get so wrapped up in the commercialization of the season that you forget that you forget that you are part of it 
and your light and your love and your hope is exactly what may be needed for somebody in your on your pathway in during in your this part of your journey during this season. Right? Here's a few. Always, 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 in season or not, whatever. You can use these anytime, but specific, specifically this time because you got your marching papers. Be ready to encourage. How do you be ready to encourage? By keeping yourself lifted, by keeping your hope generated and moving. How do you do that? Celebrate it, you know, rejoice that you that I have a hope, that I understand that it might not look like it on paper. It may not look like it on, you know, on this side of the, ledger but i visualize something a whole lot bigger and better because i have a future a hope i have a hope i have a future that's full of everything i hope for so there is a future and there is hope in that future if there's a future there's hope because hope you know it's, it's there right so whether you are in the midst of sharing it, just be prepared. Be ready to share it. Be ready to encourage with your joy and your best smile. Because like like a, like they like the song said earlier, a smile costs you nothing. A smile costs you nothing. And as you're backing up or walking out the store or wherever, and you see someone in need. Even if you don't have anything to give out of your pocket or nothing that you're willing to take off, it's kind of cold and rainy, you may want to keep your shoes on to get home, but you may not want to, you can still give them a smile and you can give them a word of encouragement. Hey, you know, do you know that you're, you, you, there is a better to borrow? It's just, you know, you just got to look and your mind's eye, you just gotta visualize it. You gotta lift your head up and you gotta accept the smile that I'm giving you, I'm sharing with you. And if you get them to smile back, if you get them to smile back, you caught them. They caught it, they caught your, they, they are, they are you, you're contagious and they caught you, all right? So be ready to encourage with a smile and, if, and that ready word, that ready word that, you know, hopefully you practiced it enough by now that you know that it is, there is a, future and there is a hope right there's going to be tomorrow i might not be here but there's going to be a tomorrow but if i'm here tomorrow then hope's going to be there waiting for me along with hopefully a whole lot of other stuff that i'm hoping and visualizing and ultimately believing for right so those are two things and be ready to encourage and have your, with joy, and with your best smile. Number, the, the next one is love generously. And I can't say enough that we are, and I can, I'm going to always remember, remember this too, as, as you're going through this next few weeks. We are called to be hands, the hands, the feet, and the mouth of God. Right? Somebody says that. Uh, I, I'll, I might say to you, you know, God spoke to me. God spoke in my heart. That's how God speaks. God doesn't, you know, speak to me like you speak to me or call me up on the telephone or whatever. But he might call me up through one of you to remind me something of something that I didn't know or to remind me, I saw you yesterday and you didn't look like you had something on your mind where you were or everything okay, you know, ah. That sharing, that's that sharing the love, that's being, have it, letting me know that God sees through you. God saw me through you. And I don't ever take it for granted. Every good and perfect thing that comes to me, no matter who it comes from or through, I know where it comes from. You know, it comes from, comes from above, through you or them or him or, you know, those people, whatever. It comes through my source. Now, but I thank you with all generous, all love and all kindness and all intentions that you allow yourself to be used 
by my father, by source, by God, by creator. You're his hands in his, you're his hands, feet and mouth. So in order for love to be mobilized and visualized and experienced in this realm, in the physical, the natural, it takes us. It takes you and me and all of them, or everybody who's maybe stingy with their love. It requires all of us to express love generously. Generously, as our Father is generous to us. Let us be generous with the love that was given to us in the first place. It wasn't even ours. It was given to us. I'm too busy. As a physical person, I am much too busy worrying about me, worrying about my stuff, my household, my needs. My... Then, but because I am a spirit being, God reminds me through my heart and my spirit that it's not just about you, Jean, and your body, and your house, and your car, and your stuff that you need about a whole lot more folk. It's about whomever I bring into your path, wh whomever shares the journey with you. Yeah. So love generously every opportunity you get because the love was not your source. You're just a conduit. As, my do as I tell my children, you're just a channel. Give yourself over to be used generously by loving, demonstrating, and celebrating your hope, your love, your smiles, whatever, whatever it is that you want to share with another. Understand that, you know, wasn't mine in the first place. Wasn't mine in the first place. God always gives you more. Remember Solomon, he asked for wisdom. God gave him wisdom and then some. So you give and you can never outgive the source and the giver, right? The last thing, uh, the last thing I want to, I wanted to uh, suggest that you can use for um, demonstrating and celebrating your hope is pray, prayer, prayer, prayer. There's a there's a saying that pray until something happens. So when you see someone. When you can't give them anything else, you can't even give, you know, I'm going to be, if I stop, I'm going to be late for getting back to work. But you know what? On my way back to work, I can say, I can put in a request to father, to source for that person. I didn't have time to stop, but I can pray for them. And if I do stop and I'm listening to them and, and I just don't have the dollar in my purse to give you, I can, you know, let me give you a prayer. Let me give you this word. Your future, you have a future and there's hope there. You have a future and it's hopeful. You can tell them that. Then you can, you know, put that request into father. Remember this man, I saw this man without shoes. I saw this man who had a cup in his hand and he was begging. I saw this man with a sign on the street, just, just back there. You saw him too, father. He said, I need work. My children are hungry. I pray that they find that they are provided food. That you find a way to get them food. You find a way to, that, that he can feed his children. You find a way that he can get that job that he's asking for. It's the word. It's the simple little word. You don't even have to say it out loud. You can whisper it to your mind because God not only sees, like Mullen said, but God also hears, all right? And he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily have to hear us, blah, 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 blah. He can hear the murmurs and the, and the just the movements, just the, our hearts. And sometimes we don't pay attention to our hearts, but God is always, always listening to our heart, right? So pray. I am going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that because the bottom line is all of this, all, all of the celebration that we're doing when we're, when we're sharing, the bottom line is for, the, for our celebration to be a catalyst for whomever it is that we share with, whomever even see us. When people see you smiling with a joy in your face, even if they're having their problems, they might 
look at you and they got to disturb them. It may disturb them enough to say, what, what, what are they so happy about? You know? And if you can, if you're like me, sometimes I can sense that, you know, they're wondering why I got the stupid smile on my face. I might, you know, this time of year, I might let them know, you know, Merry Christmas. Ah, Merry Christmas. Oh, I, oh, I got it. I, I, I bought an extra bag of groceries and I want to give that to you. Or I bought a, a, an extra, or I got an extra, you know, dozen eggs. I want to give that to you. I want to leave that to you. So share, share your hope this Christmas. Share your hope this holiday season. Practice it. Practice that word that we gave you earlier that, that reminded us that, what did it, what, I want to I make sure I said, there is a future hope for you. Proverbs simply says that there is a future hope for you. It's hope, it's future, and it's for you. And it's for them, it's for him, it's for her. So just share it, share it. Smile, do it with joy, love generously, and say a prayer for it. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful holiday season and have fun celebrating it. It's just a few ways. I'm sure you can come up with other ways. And if, and if you do, you know, shoot me a text message and remind me of some ways that I can celebrate my hope and share it with others. If you can think of anything that that um, might come to your mind or certain ways that you do it, remind me. Remind me. If it's in my if it's in my power to do, I would I would love to do. I love I love celebrating. I don't have to have too many too many reasons, but this this season, during this season, I want to be deliberate, intentional, and conscious and, and aware of how I celebrate and how I'm seen, how I'm viewed, how when I'm out and about, I want to look like I'm happy and I'm celebrating, I'm full of joy. So they might stop me and ask me what it is, and hey, I will not hesitate because there's a hope for the future, girl. You know, it's gonna be Christmas in a few weeks, and my birthday is coming in February. I, you know, I can tell you all kind of things. <laughs> I appreciate you guys again being with me and I appreciate you being a part of the, Christ, the sun, Sunday morning uh, spiritual celebration. I appreciate that. And I want to, again, encourage you to share, you know, let people know, you know, if there's any, if, if there's, if you know of anybody with their head down or looking at their feet, wondering, you know, somebody, when am I going to get these shoes, whatever, tell them about, tell them about the Sunday morning service, shoot them the link, you know, this, this link, I just don't, I don't want to, I'm like what I am what we did start doing is we are recording our messages going forward and we will be we'll be posting them on our YouTube channel and we'll post the links on our Instagram page as well as our Facebook page and we don't have any other I don't think we have we have TikTok I don't think we have any others right now but the the links will be on there that will you have the message we don't we won't we don't have the whole service we just have the the message and maybe uh, the preamble to the message maybe so that's all I have with for you this morning. And I hope that you got your walking papers and I hope that you've got your, your walking message and I hope you got your plan mapped out because you got to go to work tomorrow. You got to get those good kids ready for school. You got to get in that parking line and, you know, drop, pick up those kids later. You, you got to be in the grocery store. You got to be at the gas pump. You got to be at the bank. You're going to, you've got places to be and you're going to see, you're going to be alert and aware so that you can intentionally intentionally ignite someone's hope so they can revive it and restore it and bring it back alive because they got a future. They got a future. They got a future. They just need some hope to get to that future. And you're going to share that with them next week. Thanks again for being with me. And that is it for today. Manifest best always. And the best way to manifest is to be aware, purposeful, and intentional about it. Right? Until next week, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of the Sunday and have a great prosperous week. Uh, remember that God loves you and I love you too because God lends me his love to celebrate with you. So I hope you do the same. Spread it, play it forward. Don't keep it for yourself. You know, the more you use it, and the more you, it keeps flooding through you. Anyway, remember you are the hands, the feet, and the mouth of Father of God, a creator. Go out, make somebody happy. Make somebody stay. Give somebody, let them catch your smile. Be contagious. God bless. And I will hopefully see you next Sunday.
Take care. See you next week.